Orizic Laborima, Wikipedia article audio. Orizic Laborima, commonly known as African rice, is one of the two domesticated rice species. It was first domesticated and grown in West Africa, and was brought to the Americas by enslaved West African rice farmers. It is now largely a subsistence crop, rarely sold in markets even in West Africa. History Use Traits Appearance Hardiness Yield and processing Breeding Cultivars African cultivars American cultivars While it has been partly replaced by higher yielding Asian rice, and the number of varieties grown is declining, it persists, making up an estimated 20% of rice grown in West Africa. By comparison to Asian rice, it is hardy, pest-resistant, low labor, suited to a variety of African conditions, filling, and has a distinct nutty flavor. It is also grown for cultural reasons, for instance, it is sacred to a Waisna followers among the Jola people, and is a heritage variety in the United States. Crossbreeding between African and Asian rice is difficult, but there exist some crosses. Humans have independently domesticated two different rice species. African rice was domesticated from wild African rice, or Riza barthii, while Asian rice, was domesticated from wild Asian rice, Oriza rufopagon. Oriza barthii still grows wild in Africa, in a wide variety of open habitats. The Sahara was formerly wetter, with massive paleolakes in what is now the Western Sahara. As the climate dried, the wild rice retreated and probably became increasingly domesticated as it relied on humans for irrigation. Rice growing in deeper, more permanent water became floating rice. It is believed to have been domesticated 2,000-3,000 years ago in the inland delta of the upper Niger River, in what is now Mali. It then spread through West Africa. It has also been recorded off the east coast of Africa, in the Zanzibar archipelago. Wild rice seed heads shatter scattering the rice grains to seed the next generation. Domestic rice does not shatter, making the grains easy for humans to gather. A mutation that caused rice not to shatter would probably have been the beginning of domestication. IBN Bear recorded rice couscous in the area of present-day Mali in 1350. In the late 15th and 16th centuries, the Portuguese sailed to the Southern Rivers area in West Africa and wrote that the land was rich in rice. Hay said they found the country covered by vast crops, with many cotton trees and large fields planted in rice, the country looked to them as having the aspect of a pond. The Portuguese accounts speak of the Filipojola, Landuma, Biafida, and Bainic growing rice. Andre Alvarez de Almada wrote about the dike systems used for rice cultivation, from which modern West African rice dike systems are descended. African rice was brought to the Americas with the transatlantic slave trade, arriving in Brazil probably by the 1550s and in the U.S. in 1784. The seed was carried as provisions on slave ships and the technology and skills needed to grow it were brought by enslaved rice farmers. Newly imported African slaves were marketed for their rice growing skills, as the high price of rice made it a major cash crop. The tolerance of African rice for brackish water meant it could be grown on coastal deltas, as it was in West Africa. There are numerous stories about how the rice came to North America 
including a slave smuggling grains in her hair and a ship driven into trade by a storm. African rice is a rare crop in Brazil, Guiana, El Salvador, and Panama, but it is still occasionally grown there. There are also native South American rices, which makes it hard to recognize the arrival of African rice in histories. Asian rice came to West Africa in the late 1800s, and by the late 20th century had substantially supplanted native African rice. However, African rice was still used in specific, often marginal habitats, and preferred for its taste farmers may grow African rice to eat and Asian rice to sell, as African rice is not exported. The 2007 food price shocks drove efforts to raise rice production. Rice-going regions of Africa are generally net rice importers so price increases hurt. Among the efforts to increase yield was the adoption of Narica cultivars, crossbred to specifications from local farmers using African rice varieties provided by local farmers. These were bred during the 1990s and released in the early 21st century. Results so far have been mixed, the Narica varieties are less hardy and more labor-intensive, and effects on real-world yields vary. Subsidies of Narica seeds have also been criticized for encouraging the loss of native varieties and reducing the independence of farmers. Multiple varieties of African rice are often grown so that the harvest is staggered. In this way, the harvest can be eaten fresh. Freshly harvested rice is moist, and can be puffed in fire, and eaten. Fried rice have browny color when fried this is because of the husk that is green in color when heated turns brown. African rice can be prepared in much the same way as Asian rice, but has a distinct nutty flavor, for which it is favored in West Africa. African rice grains are often reddish in color, some varieties are strongly aromatic, other, like Carolina gold, are not at all aromatic. African rice is also used medicinally. African rice is a tall rice plant usually under 120 cm but up to 5 m for floating varieties, which may also branch and root from higher stem nodes. Generally, African rice has small, pear-shaped grain, reddish bran and green to black hulls, straight, simply branched panicles, and short, rounded ligules. There are, however, exceptions and it can be hard to distinguish from Asian rice. For complete certainty, a genetic test can be used. African rice is well adapted to the African environment. It is drought and deep water resistant, and tolerates fluctuations in water depth, iron toxicity, in fertile soils, severe climatic conditions, and human neglect better than Asian rice. Some varieties also mature more quickly, and may be sown directly on higher ground, eliminating the need to transplant seedlings. Most is rain-watered, and the soil is often not cultivated. African rice has profuse vegetative growth, which smothers weeds. It exhibits better resistance to various rice pests and diseases, such as blast disease. African rice gall midge, parasitic nematodes, rice stripe necrosis virus, rice yellow model virus, and the parasitic plant striga. Most African rices shatter more than Asian rices, possibly because they haven't been domesticated for as long. A few varieties of African rice are as resistant to shattering as shatter resistant Asian varieties, but most are not. On average, about half of the grains are scattered and lost. This is why yield is lower, when the heads of African rice are bagged before they become ripe, so that the shattered grains are caught in paper bags, 
the yield of African rice is the same as the yield of Asian rice. Like other grains, rice may lodge, or fall over, when grain heads are full. African rice's greater height and weaker stems makes it more likely to lodge, although it also lets it survive in deep water, and makes it easier to harvest. African rice tends to elongate rapidly if completely submerged, which is not advantageous in regions prone to short floods, as it weakens the plant. The grains of African rice are more brittle than those of Asian rice. The grains are more likely to break during industrial polishing. Broken rice is widely used in West Africa and some cookbooks from the region will suggest manually breaking the grains for certain recipes, but most broken rice eaten is from Asian rice, about 16% of which is broken in processing. The genome of Oglaberima has been sequenced, and was published in 2014. This allowed genomic as well as physiological comparison with related species, and identified some effects of some genes. African and Asian rice do not readily interpollinate, even under controlled conditions, and when they do, the offspring are very rarely fertile. Even the fertile crossbred offspring have low fertility. Crossbreeding seems to have succeeded in at least one area of Maritime Guinea, as some varieties there show crossbred genes. More recently, the Narica cultivars have been developed using green revolution techniques like embryo rescue. Over 3,000 crosses were made as part of the Narica program. Breeding within the species is easier, and there are uncounted numbers of African rice varieties, although the majority may have been lost. A similar crossed variety was bred in the United States in 2011 and work is being done on crosses with Indian rice varieties. There are a great many varieties of African rice. In the 1960s older women in Hippolym could unhesitatingly name more than 10 varieties of African rice that were no longer planted, besides the half dozen that were then still being planted. Each woman would plant multiple different varieties to sweep varying microhabitats and to stagger the harvest. A 2006 survey showed that a village typically cultivated 25 varieties of rice, an individual household would on average have 14 varieties and grow 4 per year, this, however, is down from the 7 to 9 varieties per woman that was average in previous decades. Women who are traditionally responsible for the seeds, trade them often over long-distance networks. Varieties, each with subtypes, include The cultivars the Africa Rice Center calls TOG 12303 and TOG 9300 have low shattering, and thus yields comparable with low shattering Asian rice varieties. Scientists from the Africa Rice Center managed to crossbreed African rice with Asian rice varieties to produce a group of interspecific cultivars called New Rice for Africa. Aspira, Ebenicolorata, Evoluta, Rigida, Rustica. Carolina Gold is an heirloom cultivar grown in the early United States, sometimes known as golden seed rice for the color of its grains. Long grain gold seed rice boasted grains 5 12 ths of an inch long, and was brought to market by planter Joshua John Ward in the 1840s. Despite its popularity, the variety was lost in the American Civil War. Charleston Gold was released in 2011 and is a crossbreed of Carolina Gold and two Oriza Sativa breeding lines called IR64 and IR65610-24-3-6-2011. Which raised the yield, shortened the stem, and added an aromatic quality to the rice. <laughs>